Hey everybody, welcome back to Star Trek Nitpickers. Lieutenant William here, and Commander Corbo here. Thanks for joining us. Today we're talking about the new showrunner for Picard, Terry Matalis. Terry Matalis is a Star Trek veteran, having started his career working as an assistant to the producers on Star Trek Voyager, and then on Star Trek Enterprise as a production assistant. He also got to do some writing for Enterprise. Along with Jonathan Fernandez, he developed the story for the third season episode, Impulse. Impulse is a pretty good episode that sees T'Pol lose her ability to suppress her emotions and have to deal with a mental breakdown. It's also sort of an homage to horror films with the Vulcan zombies running around, but that really is secondary to the interesting story it tells with T'Pol. Matalis also developed the story for the third season episode Stratagem, all by himself this time. Stratagem is a better episode than Impulse, in my humble opinion. It deals with the Enterprise crew trying to fool a Zindi scientist into believing he's become a good friend of Archer's, but subsequently lost his memory. It's a great story of gaslighting and subterfuge. Both of these Enterprise episodes start in the middle of the story and then go back and explain how we got to this crazy point shown in the first scene. So can we expect stuff like that in the next season of Star Trek Picard? Matalis also appeared in the last episode of Star Trek Enterprise, These Are the Voyages. In his only acting credit on IMDb, he played a command division crewman on the Enterprise D. He's uncredited in the episode. Matalis has another Star Trek writing credit, though this one was never on a screen. He helped write Hive, a comic book set in the Next Generation universe that deals with a distant future in which Picard has become Locutus again. I really loved this comic. It's actually written mostly by Brandon Braga, a more well-known Star Trek writer who now works on The Orville. Hive is easily my favorite Star Trek comic book story ever. Way before the Picard series was envisioned, this story teams Picard up with Seven of Nine in a fascinating way that also involves a dead data in a big way. The story takes place in a few time periods, showing Picard as captain of the Enterprise E after Riker has left to captain the Titan, and also hundreds of years later as Locutus, realizing that even though the Borg have assimilated everybody in the universe, they still aren't perfect. He decides to resurrect Data from an old copy of his Positronic Matrix recovered from B4 when the Daystrom Institute was assimilated and team up with him to kill the Borg Queen. In this time period, Seven of Nine has been turned into the Queen's spider-like guardian, so Data and Locutus have to take her down. It's interesting to note Brandon Braga, who wrote this story, used to go out with Jerry Ryan, who played Seven of Nine. So the fact that he wrote her as a giant spider woman who gets slain like an evil dragon makes me wonder if it was a tough breakup. Speaking of love interests, Vosh is back in this story too, guys. It's pretty awesome, working the main cast of The Next Generation back together again seamlessly. The art is great, and there are a lot of interesting themes like individuality, perfection, and regret. It's really an epic story, full of twists, and it would have made a great film. I really wish they had used this story for the first season of Star Trek Picard, which, in my opinion, tells a less satisfying story with a lot of the same characters and ideas. I mean, we have Picard, center stage, Data coming back to life, a team-up with Seven of Nine, Riker and Troy, not to mention the Borg. I'd say there's a good chance the writers for Star Trek Picard read this comic book. I highly recommend it. I can't say that enough, guys. So, Terry Matalis co-wrote the script for this comic. The story is by Brandon Braga. But this comic definitely indicates Matalis knows his Trek. And even more than that, he knows Picard and Seven of Nine and how they might interact. Combine that with the fact that Jerry Ryan, who plays Seven of Nine, recently became a recurring character on the new MacGyver show shortly after Terry Matalis became the new showrunner, and you have to think there's a very good chance we'll be seeing a good deal more of Seven of Nine on Star Trek Picard. I'm going to talk more about MacGyver in a moment, but first I want to point out, Matalis says he grew up on the original Star Trek movies and they had a big impact on him. He was also a huge fan of Star Trek The Next Generation. Here's a quote from him on this. I grew up with Star Trek. I grew up with the original series movies, really influential to me. And then Star Trek The Next Generation I grew up with in high school. Star Trek has always been a huge part of my life. That comes from an interview he did for the nerdybird.com. Earlier in the interview, he lists The Wrath of Khan as one of his favorite films. Matalis is also well known for his love of the Back to the Future films. According to IMDb, he and his friend Joe Walser constructed one of the most authentic replicas of the DeLorean time machine seen in the Back to the Future films. 
Their outstanding work on the replica led Bob Gale, one of the writers of the films, to put them in charge of restoring the original model used in the films. They did a great job, and it was featured in a Nike commercial that also saw Christopher Lloyd return to the role of Doc Brown. Madelis has another connection to Christopher Lloyd. His love of time travel stories led him to develop a script for the pilot of a time travel show. The folks who owned the rights to 12 Monkeys ended up reading the script and asking Madelis to change it around to be for a 12 Monkeys TV show. He agreed and ended up only changing the names of the main characters in order to make it work. The show was well received and ran for four seasons. I watched a fair amount of it and it's pretty good. Christopher Lloyd appeared as a guest star in the third season, something Madelis called a dream come true. I wish Christopher Lloyd was in Star Trek. That would be cool. He is in Star Trek, Commander Corbo. Lloyd played Commander Krug in Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. Before that, he was only really known as the drug-addled Jim Ignatowski from the sitcom Taxi. Leonard Nimoy, who directed The Search for Spock, thought Lloyd was perfect for the villainous Klingon, and insisted he be cast in the role, even when the producers felt he was all wrong. Hmm, I wonder if he gave him the idea to go back in time in the next film. Could be, Commander Corbo, could be. Anyway, getting back to Twelve Monkeys, Madelis and his friend Travis Fickett, who he developed the show with, took over as showrunners in the second season. Madelis handled the job by himself for the third and final fourth season. In his interview with TheNerdyBird.com, Madelis mentions being friends with Brian Fuller, the guy who used to work on Star Trek Voyager and was initially in charge of developing Star Trek Discovery until he left the project in its early days. The Nerdy Bird interview is from back before Discovery had come out, and in it, Madelis talks about how he's hoping to get a tour of the new bridge set from his old friend Brian Fuller. Does the fact that Madelis is well known for time travel stories indicate he'll be doing a time travel story with Picard? Well, there are a couple of different ways to look at this. My inclination is to say no, because it seems likely Madelis is hoping to show people he can do something besides time travel with science fiction. On the other hand, isn't it possible he was brought on to Picard specifically because some of the producers wanted a time travel story? Well, we've seen a fair amount of time travel recently. Discovery's second and third seasons were full of it, so maybe there's a long-standing plan to connect Picard and Discovery with a time travel story. Maybe, but to be honest, it doesn't really seem to me like there's anybody with that kind of far-reaching vision working on Discovery. Okay, so let's talk about MacGyver. CBS decided to reboot the old 80s show and make it a bit more like the old Mission Impossible show, giving MacGyver a team and making him a bit more like an American James Bond than the caring loner we got in the original show. Ready-made science still saves the day about two-thirds of the way through the episodes, but it feels kind of tacked on instead of natural like it did in the original show where it was at the heart of the formula. I watched the first ever episode of the new MacGyver while doing research for this video. I wasn't impressed and ended up turning it off. Shortly after that, I noticed that Madelis only came on in season 3, so I watched the first episode of that season, which was also written by Madelis. It was a little bit better, but still not something I would recommend. Let's hope he can manage to run MacGyver and Picard at the same time. It's not easy being the showrunner for a show. I know from my first-hand experience putting together my Star Trek fan fiction cartoon, The USS New York, Lost in Space. I've been spending so much time working on our upcoming second season, I barely had time to watch Star Trek. Now, to be fair, Madelis has a whole staff of writers and a production team. I have to do everything myself. I've now got the second season mapped out, half the scripts are written, and the first episode is so close to being done, it's scary. The next time you want to sit down and watch some funny sci-fi with a lot of heart, please check out our first season of eight episodes right here on our channel, Star Trek Nitpickers. We don't have Patrick Stewart, yet, but we do have a lot of very talented actors helping to bring these new Star Trek stories to life. We can only hope Madelis will pay a little more attention to Star Trek Picard than he does to MacGyver, or at least divide his time equally. Will Madelis do a good job with Picard? Only time will tell. Or maybe a time machine. Here's something to mull over your Earl Grey tea, though. He recently tweeted, Just experienced an absolutely legendary moment on Star Trek Picard Season 2 that I can say nothing about. What do you think he's talking about? Let me know in the comments below, and please let me know your thoughts on all things Trek. This channel is all about opening up conversations. Please help us out by subscribing and staying in touch. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper, Earthlings! Is that shipwide channel open, Lieutenant Shirley?
Go ahead, Captain. Crew, this is your captain. It's true, these are trying times. We find ourselves in a bit of a pickle. But we need to make the most of this time. We need to help each other now more than ever. This is no time to turn on your fellow officers or figure you can go it alone. We're all going to need to keep ourselves calm and to help each other do that. We will get through this. Don't panic. Make sure you have a good towel. If the ship breaks down, we may need to hitchhike. Captain out. Restore gravity on deck six, Lieutenant. Ah! Oh, I'm calm. Real calm. Cool as a cucumber.